Good day. Welcome to the Great White North. A macro lens and a wide angle zoom lens may seem like complete opposites with nothing in common. But what if you could have the best of both in one lens? Today, I'm going to be showing you a lens that is just that, a combination of both. This is a wide angle macro lens. It is the Venus Optics Laowa 15mm f4.0. And why would you want a lens like this? Well, most macro lenses have a focal length of 50 millimeters or longer and have a very narrow angle of view, which is great for isolating tiny subjects from their background and providing a considerable working distance. However, there are instances where a subject's surroundings are an important part of its story. And a lens like this Laowa 15 millimeter produced that very important one-to-one -one magnification ratio while providing a very wide angle of view and ultimately a very unique perspective. To show you just how much of an impact the angle of view can have on a composition, I'm going to be taking three photos this morning, each with a different lens and all with the same settings with one minor exception. For a subject, I have watched a rough skin newt crawl beneath this piece of bark. The first photo will be taken with the Canon 100mm f2.8 L IS macro. It's a great versatile macro lens. I'll be shooting at f5.6, 1 one hundredth of a second and ISO 100. Now this lens has a minimum focusing distance of 30 centimeters, and at that minimum focusing distance, I can shoot one-to-one -one magnification or life size, so true macro photography. Its angle of view is 24 degrees, so rather narrow. I know this is gonna be a rather tight shot. So hopefully the newt is still there. Good news it is. So photo number one from 30 centimeters. So it's a good shot, it's sharp, it's in focus, it's a portrait of the newt. It doesn't show me where this toxic amphibian lives, and that's what I would like to do this morning. So right away, I know I need a wider angle of view. So to do that, I will use the Canon 16 to 35 f2.8 L Mark II. I will be shooting at 16 millimeters, which gives me an angle of view of 108 degrees, which is wider than the 24 degrees of the 100 millimeter lens. The minimum focusing distance on this lens is actually closer. I get to be 28 centimeters away, but at that minimum focusing distance, it can only produce a magnification ratio of 1 to 4.3. So I know the newt will not occupy a lot of the composition. It's going to be quite small. Again, shooting at 1 one hundredth of a second f5.6 ISO 100 from 28 centimeters at 16 millimeters, photo number two. That's much better. It's more along the lines of what I'm looking for. I can see the environments where this newt lives, but it's quite small. Like I predicted, I knew ahead of time, it doesn't occupy a lot of the composition. So I need to be closer with a similar angle of view. To do that, I'm going to use the Laowa 15 millimeter F4.0 macro, which has an angle of view of 110 degrees, which is two degrees wider than that 16 to 35 millimeter lens. Its minimum focusing distance is 12 centimeters. That does give me a one-to-one -one magnification ratio and a true life-size macro photo. However, I do not want to have this lens four millimeters from that new. It's gonna cause it undue stress, and I don't wanna do that. So this is the exception in the settings. I'm not gonna be shooting at one-to-one. -one. I'm gonna be shooting at 0 0.4 to one. So photo number three, And that's better. Already I know of the three photos I've taken this morning, this is the strongest. The newt occupies a fair amount of the frame. It's not one-to-one -one magnification, but I can also see where it lives, which is a great compromise. So depending on what you're photographing, this lens may not be the right choice. If your subject isn't overly cooperative or it has the potential of causing you harm, having your lens four millimeters from your subject to create a one-to-one -one magnification ratio, that's just not practical. Even if you can get yourself and your camera very close to a subject, you have to take a moment to think if you're causing that subject any unnecessary stress.
As you just saw, the incredibly short working distance of this lens can be a huge challenge, especially when using the one-to-one -one magnification ratio when your subject is 12 centimeters from the focal plane. The shadow cast by this lens and the camera will eclipse any valuable ambient light. This is inevitable, it will happen. The solution quite simply is to add light. However, your subject is four millimeters from the front lens. And so to add light into that small gap, that is incredibly tough. Additionally, because the angle of view is 110 degrees, you have to have your light source a fair distance from your subject. And even if you think you have it out of frame, it will accidentally pop along that top edge at least once or twice. Fortunately, the lens does a fairly good job of tolerating flaring. It's not too ugly and overly distracting. Now seems like an appropriate time to highlight the importance of keeping your lens clean. Any dirt or grime on the front element will be crystal clear when shooting at the minimum focusing distance. Fortunately, the 77mm thread allows you to use a UV filter to protect the front element because inevitably things will touch it. As great as it is having a filter protect your front element, it does occupy a fair bit of your working distance. And ultimately when shooting at one to one, you're going to have to have your subject touch the filter. Working without a filter is a little simpler. It increases your working distance and makes the small gap between your lens and your subject a little more accessible when adding light. I've had my hands on this lens for a number of months now and I've been quite happy with it. This is my first experience using anything from Venus Optics Laua and prior to getting this lens I wasn't sure what to expect. Admittedly I am rather abusive with my gear and I need it to be very, very durable. This lens often finds itself pressed against rocks, dragged across moss or sitting a few millimeters above water. Its build quality is solid. It's full metal construction, and that's obvious when you pick it up, it has a substantial weight to it. The aperture ring and focus ring, they're both smooth and feel very solid as well. Now the aperture ring is smooth and declicked, which is very helpful when you're shooting video. An awkward bit though, those two rings, aperture and focus, they are swapped. So your focus is close to the camera and your aperture is furthest away. And even after months of using this lens, I make the mistake quite often. I go to change focus and I've changed the aperture instead. It has 14 diaphragm blades, perfect for keeping those bokeh balls circular at any f-stop. Great for Christmas lights, split toning, crushed blacks, and sharing on social media platforms ending in gram. The lens is completely manual. No autofocus, no electronic aperture, and no communication with your camera, meaning XF data will be without aperture and focal length. In addition to the Canon EF mount you've been seeing me use in this configuration, the lens is also available in a few other mounts, including Nikon F, Sony FE and A, and Pentax K mounts. Despite how tricky this lens can be to use, with a bit of practice and perseverance, you can produce incredible photographs. The wider focal length does mean extra attention needs to be paid to your composition backgrounds, but if you pull it off successfully, your photographs will be very unique. Having the ability to capture macro imagery with a wide angle perspective is something I've always wanted the ability to do, and this lens is the perfect tool for just that task. Having said that, I find it best for shooting subjects that don't need a one-to-one -one ratio. Think of a subject slightly larger than a golf ball. This allows for a slightly larger working distance and still super fun compositions. If you decide to invest in the Laowa 15mm f4, in the box you will find the shrink-wrapped lens, the lens hood, and a uniquely translated user manual. This lens has amazing image quality. It is on par for what you should expect from any macro lens. It is very sharp. 
With the wider focal length though, it's worth pointing out there is some noticeable softness in the corners of the frame. It is most prominent when shooting wide open, but it clears up at around f8 or f11. Also when shooting wide open, there is a bit of vignetting, but that disappears as soon as you hit f5.6. Then there's distortion. Barrel distortion, because of the wide focal length, it is smack in the middle of every frame. Colors and contrast are great. They're not what you would get from a Canon L series lens, but that shouldn't really be expected considering this lens's price point. In addition to being a very unique option for macro work, the Laowa 15mm also includes shift capabilities for APS-C size sensors. Not tilt shift, just shift. Meaning you can correct for converging lines, but you can't create the miniature perspective that true tilt shift lenses can produce. You can shift it 6mm up or 6mm down. And you do so by pressing in this incredibly awkward and knife sharp little tab and just pushing up or yanking it down. I don't have a camera with an APS-C sized sensor, but I do have the 50 megapixel full frame sensor of the Canon 5DSR, which is more than adequate resolution to crop out the edges of the image circle that results when you shift this lens. However, for demonstrative purposes today, I'm not going to crop that out. So in the second photo, you will see the edges of the image circle. Photo number one, composition, it includes the forest floor all the way up to the forest canopy. And you can see the trees, they are converging lines. So if I press this tab in and impale my finger, shift up six millimeters and recompose as closely as I can. Photo number two with that shift corrects those converging lines. The trees are a lot straighter. It is pretty amazing. If you've not had the opportunity to use a true tilt shift lens, a lens with just shift at a fraction of the price is a very interesting alternative. I know I've spent a considerable amount of time highlighting the challenges associated with this lens. However, I do want to emphasize it is a phenomenal lens, but it's a niche lens. It's not for everyone. If you're someone who has a strong passion for macro photography and you're looking for compositions with perspectives you've never captured before, do give this lens some strong consideration. With that, if you've liked this video, click like. If you have a question or a comment, put it down below. Thanks for watching and I will see you next time.